The New York Times headline says it all. Let me read it verbatim where anti-tax fervor means, quote, all services will cease. Is it time to turn out the lights because the tea party is over? I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, and this is your Right Angle brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. And folks, there's so much detail in this story, I hope I can convey it accurately. But the New York Times did this story about a couple of allegedly troubled counties in Oregon, uh, specifically mentioning Douglas County and Curry County, Oregon, which are heavily forested counties. And in those counties, apparently, there is such a proliferation of people who oppose tax increases that they haven't been able to pass a bond issue or a tax increase in the last decade, and they're having trouble with basic services. For example, they just had a $6 million uh, levy attempt, a bond issue attempt, rather, for uh, a library, and the people said no. And uh, then, you know, they also have trouble, like there's a house that owes taxes, $8,500 in back taxes, but apparently county government is so impoverished, it can't even ask for the $8,500. It doesn't have anybody to do that. And (laughs) if you need a county sheriff now, after midnight, tough luck, because they're only working, you know, they just cut out that midnight shift because it's too difficult. You'll have to call the state police, okay? So all of this is making it sound like things are coming apart at the seams. But I did a little digging, and it wasn't hard at first because I actually just clicked on a link in the New York Times story that took me to a report done by the state of Oregon about the financial condition of counties. And indeed, Douglas and Curry counties were on a list of four counties that the state government was monitoring because of their financial condition because they were concerned about it. You see, all of this comes down to the fact that these counties are so heavily forested. And in 1907, our buddy, what was that, Teddy Roosevelt at the time? It was Teddy, yeah. Yes, impose the federal government's uh, management on vast tracts of land in the country. And so because of that, uh, then the federal government was managing timber and regulating who could take down, t- who could uh, cut down trees. And so the federal government was kicking back about 25% of their timber revenues. But then that eventually uh, started to go downhill in the 1970s when the spotted owl became a major concern of our country, along with the Pacific salmon. And so the federal government decided we can't take as many trees down anymore. And so we don't have as much money to give to these local communities. Anyway, all in all, these communities have grown dependent upon federal money. Now that federal money has been cut back and there's a lot more detail uh, to it than this. But the upshot of it is, gentlemen, that the New York Times wants us to believe that these counties are in big trouble. But guess what? The New York Times didn't mention the spotted owl. The New York Times really didn't talk about the federal government's role in any of this. The New York Times basically said it's a bunch of Trump voter Tea Party types, although they didn't use the term Tea Party, but they did say Trump voters, uh, who don't want taxes passed. And as a result, people won't be able to get the services in those counties. Stephen Green, has has the Tea Party's uh, great vision come to this where people can't get basic (laughs) services in, in rural counties in Oregon? Oh, my. You know, I used to live not far from there, Humboldt County, California, behind the Redwood Curtain, as we called it, on uh, on the far north coast, just about 60 miles shy of Oregon. Uh, you know, rain and fog and redwoods and, and yes, spotted owls. This was, uh, this was the news talk of my life for about four years running. In the, in the late 80s and early 90s. I, I, I know it quite well. But that said, let's, 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 Let's look at what all this, uh, what all these services, all these regulations actually buy us. Uh, my grandfather once, uh, he had a small uh, steel service company back in St. Louis, Southwest Steel Supply. And he once confided in me that he spent about 30% of his time just uh, trying to stay within the law. He's not talking about the money he had to spend on, mm-hmm. uh, on, on accountants or the taxes he paid. He was talking about 30% of his time in the office was spent talking to bureaucrats, talking to St. Louis aldermen, talking to, to, a, to a lawyer, just trying to stay within the law. And, and I asked him, well, if you had that 30% of your time back, what, what would you do? And he said, well, I'd either have 30% more free time or the company would be 30% bigger because I would have invested that time in growing the business, which means he would have been employing 30% more people, paying 30% more taxes. The employees would have been paying 30% more taxes and all the rest. And you multiply that across every small and medium-sized business across the country. And you understand why the country is in such a mood for a, a tax reform, if not an outright tax revolt, because 
It's the invisible costs that are absolutely killing us. And even with the three and a half trillion dollars we send to Washington every year and the four trillion dollars that Washington spends every year, all we get for our money is aggravation. Now, Bill Whittle, there's a fascinating thing that was mentioned in the New York Times story, and that is that because of budget cutbacks, one of these counties decided uh, that they couldn't afford park maintenance anymore. So they decided to use the teenagers who were in their juvenile detention facility to keep the, the parks cleaned up and maintained. Now, not only did they have clean parks at a much lower cost than they previously had, but they found that the youth recidivism rate plummeted. They found Imagine. that these people were not coming back to jail as frequently uh, for whatever reason. They didn't go into the reasons for that. So when I did some more digging into the financial condition of these counties, what I found was that while they are on the watch list from the state level, they actually uh, they have relatively high unemployment now. At, that's around 8%. And they have relatively low uh, labor uh, workforce participation numbers. 45 to 50% are actually in the workforce because they're older populations. But they also have very robust reserves in the county government. They Both their general fund reserves and their liquidity numbers are terrific, actually, by comparison to the rest of the counties in the state. So they have really, really low tax rates, but they've got a lot of money socked away for a rainy day. And they're among the counties that are best able to handle their short-term obligations because they've got the liquidity to do that. So was the Tea Party movement an utter failure? Well, this movement predates the Tea Party movement by about 240 years or something. <laughs> unless, unless, well unless, you're refer, unless you're referring to the original Tea Party yeah. movement, which was the guys chucking the tea overboard. Most people don't really understand the fact that anything that the government does, the government doesn't make anything, and it doesn't build anything, and it doesn't do anything. It hires people to do them. It hires private firms to do them. If the government is going to put in a new freeway, it's not done by people who work for the government. It's, it's the money's allocated, and private construction firms come along and do this. So what this is telling me is that all of this hyperventilation is about the one thing that these people simply cannot let out of the bag, and that is the idea of how much we spend and how little we get. The idea that we would be able to do these things on our own level and not spend a four trillion dollars if let me let me start again let's just say for example that you've got a, a street that is that is badly pot mar, potholed and you've got a lot of problems on your street you petition your county government or your state government or the federal government they come in and they pave the road what do you think the price of that would be compared to if everybody on the street got together and did competitive bidding for for a number of competitors in terms of quality time cost and so on I keep coming back to this because it's such a breakthrough for me. Richard Mayberry said that if you understand this, you'll understand everything. The government does not raise taxes in order to provide services. It provides some services in order to get the taxes. Yeah. And once you understand that, everything makes sense. So, of course, they're terrified that people would want lower taxes because if they get lower taxes and same or better benefits, then sooner or later somebody might start to wake up around here. Which, by the way, is why when the federal government is shutting down, instead of cutting the things that really matter, they cut the 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 1% of 1% that does the federal parks, let's say, or, 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 or any of these things, because they've got to make the public pay, right? Well, you've cut our money, so no more Lincoln Memorial for you. You know, they, they understand what's at stake here. And when we understand what's at stake here, it's going to be a much better country. Yeah, Bill, yeah. no Lord can tolerate an impertinent surf. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you know, and we're the, surfers. The reason, the reason why these uh, county governments... Uh, need more money is because they are about to lose the subsidy that they've been getting from the federal government that was originally passed in uh, 1993, was supposed to end in 2003, got extended in the year 2000 out to 2000. 12 Imagine. or 13, then got discontinued. Then anyway, it's supposed to go away eventually in the 2017, 2018 uh, tax year. I would not be surprised if it did not go away. But so the big alarm is, wow, this money's going away. In these counties, by the way, the federal government subsidy that they're getting through the U.S. Forest Service, Bureau of Land Management and stuff like that is in the neighborhood of 10 to 15%. Okay. So the reason why they need the subsidy 
is because they weren't getting as much money from the federal government anymore because of the environmental movement that said that you've got to protect the endangered species, okay? And the reason why the, uh, the uh, lawsuits against the federal government were successful by the environmentalist was because the federal government took over the land that originally belonged to these states and localities and counties uh, across the country, some 770 counties, I believe, and the 192 million acres or more is under federal management. So 66% of Curry County, I believe it is, is controlled by the federal government. So if you backtrack all the way through this, you realize that the reason why all this happened is because Teddy Roosevelt had the federal government take over the land, and then the federal government said, we're not going to use the land for the purpose that it was that God gave it to us, and so we're going to subsidize you, poor pathetic act. I think I'm going to, I'm going to put a, <laughs> a button on it with this. This is the title of the legislation that passed as one of the updates to that bill. It is called the Secure Rural Schools and Community Self-Determination Act. Oh. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green... I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making this possible. 